Hey everyone, welcome back to Cyber Security TV. Today we're going to talk about some security protocols. So, uh, this is going to be a sort of like an, you know, one-on-one -on -one session where we're going to go over some basics of what are the protocols. You might have gone through this uh, during your college or like, you know, whenever you are doing some sort of certification. So today we're going to talk about some different protocols and, and also talk about like how those fit into the OSI model and, and how like you know we'll, we'll focus more on the SSL or or let's say TLS. Uh, why does it help? Like how does it help uh, the encryption in transit? So uh, the first thing is what are the protocols? So the protocol is the defined or unified way to communicate across the internet across the web. So the protocols are accepted standard that we use to communicate effectively across the network medium. They are the rules we all agree to. So it's you can you can think of it as similar to uh, the time zones, right? Like every country has a different time zone. Although we do have like a UTC time zone, where everyone agrees to the uh, the defined time frame, so we can have meetings, we can have schedule. Also, we have clock synchronization, such as like NTP protocol, where you collect the logs. So, uh, like you know, if you have any security incident or anything, you want to uh, go through the logs, investigate, then those also would help be helpful if you have clock synchronized. Otherwise, it would be a mess. So, similarly, as we agreed to on the time frame, we have to agree on certain protocols that we're gonna use to communicate over the web. Uh, one of the protocol is the FTP. So this is a standard network protocol used to transfer files from one host to another over TCP IP based network connection. Now you must have used that there are a lot of FTP clients out there, but uh, from the security perspective, uh, we generally recommend using the secure FTP rather than just plain FTP because that would provide much more security and does not transfer all the files and um, all the medias over the plain text rather than they use encryption. So that's why secure FTP is one of the protocol which uh, we use to transfer the files. The other one is the SMTP. Uh, this is the protocol that we use to exchange email messages across the internet. Most computers understand and will communicate via SMTP. So anytime you want to set up a mail exchange server, uh, you are configuring your Outlook, you might have come across uh, through SMTP that you have to configure the SMTP server or anything. So that's where the SMTP is going to be very, very useful for the um, email exchange of the email messages. And we all know email messages are a core part of uh, like, you know, the web communication for any company. So uh, this, is a, this is a big deal that we need to configure SMTP securely. There are, uh, there are a lot of vulnerabilities around that like SMTP relay and, and things like that, uh, which of course, we, we don't want to dive deep into this session, but that's something, uh, another protocol that you have to uh, kind of focus on. Uh, the major protocol is the HTTP. Uh, this is a major protocol used to communicate information from web server to client's browser. So anything you want to access over, or using your browser, that's going to be on the HTTP protocol. Now, there are two variations. So a secure, so we talked about like you know some of those protocols which are unsecure like FTP, SMTP, and HTTP by default are unsecure. Now let's talk about the secure protocols. Uh, the first one is the SSH. Uh, this allows for remote login and execution. It's a cryptographic network protocol used for secure data communication. It is secure through the use of generated keys that are shared out of band. So we all know how SSH works. Uh, generally, on our production host and something, we only ha allow SSH connection from certain IP addresses, and we lock down that way to restrict the attacker or malicious actor gaining access to our production systems. So likewise, in the SSH, yeah, there is a public and private key, uh, or there is a symmetric encryption as well. So how it works is the client connecting to the server would pro present an uh, SSH key, all the senders or requesters as uh, the private key, and if it matches, then the access would be allowed, otherwise not. Uh, so that's why it's very secure communication. Next is the SSL, uh, but this has been, of course, superseded and replaced by the TLS, but uh, we still use, like, dumb SSL or TLS interchangeably. Now, uh, uh, within the TLS, there are multiple versions of it, like TLS 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1 1.3, and they have a lot of different ciphers available, so 
based on the ciphers, based on the what version you are using, we define whether you are using the security LS or not. Certain compliance like the PCI does not recommend using TLS 1.0. They do. They think like it's a weak encryption. So again, it depends on what you are, uh, what scenarios and what the context is, but. The TLS is the uh, one of the secure protocol that we generally use nowadays to communicate on the web. Now, if you look at the OSI model, so this is the uh, like you know uh, how the layers of the OSI model is. So the top we have application presentation, then session, transport, network, and data link, and physical. So when um, someone is like the sender is sending the information, it will go top to bottom so from starting from application presentation it will go all the way to physical now when the receiver is receiving this data it will go reverse it will start from the physical then go to data link go to network uh, for the decryption of all the information now to know uh, uh, can you guys guess like where the HTTP and FTP and SMTP protocols are running so those are running on the application layer while the SSL, that's on the transport layer, and that is how it provides that added security. So, for example, when the receiver is receiving the information, it's going to, of course, as I said, like it's going to go bottom to top. So, it's going to start with the physical and then go up first. So, when uh, the receiver receives this, let's say there is a malicious actor in between who is performing man in the middle attack. Now, it receives the information, it rests to the transport layer, and there is an SSL wrapper. Now, if it's not able to decrypt uh, that particular uh, message, then there is no way it can go to the application layer and, and uh, receive all the information which was sent by either HTTP or FTP or SMTP. So that is the main reason why SSL uh, uh, or TLS is, is very secure and very much important on, on encrypting uh, in transit or, or making sure our communication stays secure throughout the channel. Now, there is also an interesting topic in terms of where do you terminate the TLS. So, of course, uh, the recommendation is always terminate the TLS on the host, but uh, I don't want to get into those things, uh, but that's something we can discuss in the future session. Let me know uh, what you know about the protocols, what are the protocols that you uh, think we use um, most and what are the secure configurations that you have generally used for those protocols. I would love to hear those and, and maybe share knowledge with the other viewers as well. Uh, thumbs up if you like this video and subscribe to my channel. And of course, check it out the Facebook page, our server, Secure TV. Let me know if you have questions. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.